Uh, future me here, guys. While I was editing the video, I realized that all the sound samples I had captured with the Ibanez RG sounded like complete trash, so I had to dump all that. You're gonna see that I'm holding two different, gu different guitars, but you're only gonna hear sound samples from one of them. So I still kept the intro and kept the other uh, monologue stuff in between, so I'm holding a different guitar. Don't let that fool you. It's all one guitar. That's all you're gonna hear today. I will also mention that I did utilize a little bit of EQ on all the sound samples, but it's the exact same EQ curve for all of them. So there's no differentiation there. I just wanted to kind of peel away a little bit of the super high end and the really low end. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much just straight into the DAW and you're hearing what I'm hearing in the room. So uh, without further ado, let's roll that video now. What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, today is a very special day for me here at the home studio because I finally have here with me, my first, very first guitar head amplifier. Uh, in all the years I've played, I have never actually owned or played through an actual tube head, if you can believe that or not. And I think I just spit on the camera. Nice. This was given to me on loan from Zounds.com, who have been so gracious, providing me with lots of gear that I can, you know, then demo and review for you guys out there. Hopefully you appreciate that too. Yeah, so anyways, as you can see over here on the right side of the screen, I have my rack effects stuff. That's all from the uh, mid 90s. So I do have a tube power amplifier, tube preamp. Other than that, I've never played through tubes ever. Uh, there was a lot of years where I didn't play guitar at all. For the uh, current time frame, I've been playing digital amp sims or just solid state uh, pedals through my uh, 212 Mesa cab. I just got this in, super excited about it, and I just thought I'd run through a few uh, riffs, you know, just so you can get a sense of what it sounds like. So interestingly enough, I also have the EVH. 5150 overdrive, which uh, we all know full well, it's a distortion pedal. It says overdrive, but this thing rips. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run that through the clean channel, the green channel of the amp first, then we're gonna cycle through to the blue channel, and then finally the uh, the red channel, which is the most heavily distorted. And I'm trying to get them matched up as far as volume and distortion gain levels. So kind of you can get a sense of comparison between the different channels. So I'm just gonna run through them all. Uh, here is my clean tone now. It's about as boring and dry as can be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little uh, digital delay, just a little bit here to kind of open up the room sound, you know? Just a little, nothing crazy. All right, I'm just going to run through a few riffs here now with my uh, Charvel DK24 Hardtail loaded with Seymour Duncan, uh, Nazgul, and Sentient pickups. And we're gonna start off with the uh, green clean channel running through the EVH 5150 overdrive pedal. And I've got the gain set on that to about uh, 10 o'clock. So here we go. <laughs> Next up is the blue channel, pedal is off, gain on the blue channel is set three quarters of the way up to about three o'clock. <laughs> Lastly, the red channel, uh, which has a lot more gain, so I've got this one set to uh, the gains at just past 9 o'clock. <laughs> They all have their place, they all sound great. I mean, I don't even know which one I favor the most at this point. Uh, I was really surprised too, because as you're probably aware with the 5150 overdrive pedal, a lot of people find it to be too harsh, you know, too trebly, too much just high-end focus in there. And you can pull it back a little bit, but running it through a real amplifier that's got a lot of headroom and uh, 
resonance. I didn't even mention, mention the resonance knob at the back of this thing. You can just kind of, you know, put it where you need to to make the cab sound fuller. Same as you would with the resonance knobs on any amp sim that's out there. Um, for this one in particular, I find it sounds great pretty much right at noon or just a little past between maybe noon and one o'clock. Um, you know, but your taste may vary, so do whatever you got to do with your cabinet. Now, the 212 Mesa Recto Cab has a, a tighter, more closed back. Well, it is closed back, but it sounds a little more closed and a little uh, heavier, a little more bass forward. So I find that I don't need to d pull the resonance knob up too much, but depending on what you're playing, you might have to. Now, running it through my 412 uh, Marshall with the, um, you know, the G12T75, whatever it was, the 1968 slant cab uh, with the original Celestians, that's from like 1990. So I'm sure it's got the uh, good ones, not the made in China Celestians, but that's very trebly focused. So with that, I found I can pull the resonance knob up a lot more. And I'll probably do another video with that cab, you know, just to kind of differentiate the two. All right, and now I'm gonna go back to the green channel and just run through another riff. So, you know, sit back and relax. <laughs> And as Guthrie Trap always says, you know, uh, no extra charge for the mistakes because there were quite a few. Uh, yeah, so again, 50 watts seems perfect for my situation. You know, whether I'm going to play uh, gigs like small bars or even, you know, kind of like mid-size venues eventually, I think this is going to handle it uh, efficiently. I can't really compare it personally to the EL34s because I have not played through that one, only digital amp versions of those. But the 6L6s sound great in this thing. It has plenty of headroom. And uh, between the blue and the red channels, I would say this too. Uh, the tone stack, the you know, the high, mid, low, they seem to be almost identical between the two. The differences really lie in the amount of gain you can pull out of or get out of the amplifier in the red channel. It's much more than what you get from the blue channel. And we make it all kinds of games. Anyway, we men all kinds. Now the blue channel to me sounds a lot more open, uh, more in the room, more realistic, I guess more headroom you might say. And then the red channel has a lot more compression to it. It sounds a little bit squeezed, but also more controlled. So if you're going for the really half, you know, heavy thrash, black death metal, whatever, you, you know, the heavy, heavy gain stuff, and you really want it to still stay kind of tight, you're gonna get that from the red channel. The blue channel is a little more open. You might need to tailor it a little bit more with you know, your uh, tone knobs or you might even want to throw a, uh, I'd considered using an EQ pedal in front of it just to kind of tweak it a little bit. Uh, and I might do that in the future. But right now I'm just really enjoying the way it sounds. I'm still trying to break it into, so I just want to play it gently and not go overboard with it. I have cranked it up a couple times for a few minutes and it definitely blows the doors off the house. Uh, I will say that. Fortunately, I live alone, so I have nobody else to offend but myself with my terrible playing. Yeah, but I love this stealth. And as far as this being the first head I've ever purchased, owned, whatever, you know, utilized for, for guitar purposes, I'm in love with this thing. Uh, am I saying it's the best of the best? It's the best ever? No, but it's certainly, it's got to be in the top 10. I mean, it's iconic, right? It's not the iconic, but it is iconic because it's Eddie Van Halen. And it's one of the last amplifiers I supposedly that he kind of um, collaborated on, you know, to get the sound how he wanted it for his touring situation in the later years of Van Halen's touring. It sounds amazing. You know, I don't need the 100 watt version, that's for sure. I'm not playing stadiums. Maybe you are, and if you are, you probably aren't watching this video. Uh, but for those of us at home that are just kind of hobbyists, bedroom musicians, or maybe you're playing small bars on the weekends, you know, with your band, this will get you by 
in spades. Uh, it's got plenty of gain on tap. And the, you know, there's been a lot of talk from other YouTubers regarding the mids, especially in the tone stack of these. And the mids are very controllable. They don't seem, you know, woolly or out of, out of place because the guitar, after all, is a mid forward instrument. That's where it sits in the spectrum, you know, in the band uh, sound. So it's going to sound great in the mix. You can definitely push the mids up if you want to, but they never sound harsh unless you're going to crank the thing, you know, dime it all the way to the, to the top. But I just love this thing, man. It's just, it's amazing. Right now, I'm just having so much fun dialing in these tones and the sounds I'm getting from it that I really don't even want to run a boost through it. I have tried it, but I'm still kind of want to tailor the sound as good as possible uh, before I even put a boost in front of it or a noise gate, anything like that. Now, I will say that on the clean channel with the EVH pedal, uh, I did have the noise gate engaged, and it's at uh, 12 o'clock, so it really wasn't cutting off too much. In fact, I'll let you hear what it sounds like now. Just a little bit of, you know, not too bad at all. So just dial it up. I, I, you can go to like 9, 10 o'clock, and it's already engaging. So anyways, back to what we're talking about here today. So what really sets this amp apart from anybody else's is uh, the neon guitar sign because without that no ambiance there you have it folks that's pretty much it for today i uh, just want to run through some of the sound samples real quick with you guys you know what this sounds like you know what it is it's amazing go get one check it out go to zounds.com they've got them in stock there and uh, you will not be disappointed until next time guys i'm out of here see ya